Hello and welcome to the Luxury Lounge. I am your host, J Train, Jared Freed. Every Thursday, we go to the lounge. You might be thinking, wait a minute, what happened to the J Train podcast? It's all a part of the J Train Enterprises, but the Luxury Lounge is a new show where we get in the lounge and we complain about the luxury issues in life. And nobody can say to you, but what about, but they're starving, but people are dying. No, no, no. The Luxury Lounge is where you get to come and air your complaints with the world, and nobody can shame you for it. It is a safe space for luxury issues. And every Thursday, my guest and I will complain with you. We will do a douchey duet of sorts. And I got Shelby here on the ones and twos. Shelby's here to do some luxury complaining as well. He's playing the piano as you can hear it. I'm lying across it. Speaking to you, the listener, having a glass of Merlot. That's right. And and if you're a Patreon subscriber, you know the Luxury Lounge. And it's been so popular on that platform. We're like, let's bring it. Let's bring it out. Let's 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 blow it up. So if you'd like your luxury complaint heard, you send it to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com and you title the email Luxury Lounge. And it might get read on a Luxury Lounge episode. Shelby, does this all make sense? Am I missing anything? That's it. You know, you you write in with your problems. I, I kind of mm-hmm. picture you as like how the Dos Equis guy looks in those commercials. That's right. That's like that's a me. I, a, a silken robe. A silk robe opened up, chest hair abound. It's just that's what that's what I am, and I'm there to. Hold your hand through the complaint. That's the whole premise of the luxury lounge. So I, and listen, I'm doing this because maybe you'll become a bigger luxury lounge fan than you are the J train podcast fan. And you share it with friends and you say, listen, this guy's complaining about everything. I'm the complaint queen and you're my complaint people, my, my complaint Queens. So we come here every Thursday to air the luxury issues we all have. And I'm going to have a guest every Thursday. And this week is no different. And I'm so excited because I think they're the perfect guest for such a show. Um, and, and, and they're an amazing comedian. I have a radio show on Sirius XM every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 a.m. on Sirius XM, the Michelle Collins Show. Give it up for Michelle Collins. Thank you for coming on. Oh my God, that music, I'm not kidding. You relaxed me into a near lull, like Brad Pitt, 12 Monkeys. My eyes are rolling back in my head. I'm so happy to be here. It's a pleasure. Hi, boys. It is is such a pleasure. I'm so happy the music Mm. took you to a place. That's the thing. That's the thing about the luxury lounge is that we go in, we shut the door. and, And listen, you might not agree with some of the complaints. You might say, well, what about, well, then this is a party where we're playing the music and that and if you don't like the music it's time for you to go right yeah mm -hmm, i agree who wouldn't like that music is my question i mean uh, put me in an elevator forever lock (laughs) the doors i don't want them to ever open i want to be stuck in it to death that that's right that's right (laughs) it's so good to have you michelle what's going on in your life before it's so great to see you and Um, listen everyone needs to go follow michelle at mishkal on instagram it's gonna be all over my social media and also she has a podcast called midnight snack i have been a guest on both the podcast midnight snack and the radio show what do you think before we get into our luxury complaints um benifer Ben, I've never heard of them calling them Ben Effer. That's what I guess what you it? could call J Lo. It's like a Ben Fucker. Oh. The way you just, it's Benifer. Benifer. I'm sorry. It's a ben, ben Effer does take it to a different kind of place, like a mother Effer. Well, she's a real Ben Effer. I'll tell you that. But Benifer, the couple, well, I'm over yes. the moon. Can't you tell? I really feel, first of all, let me just say this. They both are at their physical peaks. I, I don't know how old they are. I saw before and after. After J Lo from 27 to now, whatever she's had done, I mm. want you to stitch me up, cut me open, laser me, 
pull me, yank me. I need all of it done to me today. Like I'm, I don't want to wait to 50. I want it done now. Um, I need the JLo treatment head to toe. Do you but with think no work, that I don't want to work out otherwise? A, yeah. Jennifer Lopez is like, do you think that's what it takes to be like a national hero at this point is just like have great skin and look great at 50 and we're all going to be like, okay, whatever you say, we're on board. Like, like she got, she went back to her toxic ex and we're all like, good, yes. do it, do it, please. Well, I think, I think that's the baseline. Like you can't actually have any sort of fame unless you're already where JLo is. But then on top of it, mm. she's, I mean, she really is like the best looking 50 year old maybe ever, but she's also, she's like, cool. She's kind of quiet. Like we don't really know when she's public, she's like funny. So you're like, oh, I'd love to be friends with JLo. Like, I just want to be her buddy. I am that so glad she's back with Ben. I didn't like Ben's whole thing. Ben on Raya to me was rock bottom. I mean, I'm on really? Raya and that is pushing it for me. Yes. And I'm a <laughs> nobody. Ben Affleck on Raya was too dark. And I didn't like it. The, and, and for anyone listening yeah. at home, Raya, people might not know, is the is the famous Tinder. Or, well, it, 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 Thank it, you, you for have calling to have a it that. Yeah. You have to have a following it, to be accepted into Raya. And then they have a lot of rules. What's that? Do you? Do you? <laughs> you By the way, Sandy looked a... right at me via the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby the looked directly at eye contact. I, Sa- his name Shelby. I keep calling him Sandy. Uh, maybe that's why we have tension. <laughs> Shelby looked directly <laughs> into Shelby, Michelle Collins' soul and was like, do you need a following? You know, maybe well, you can just end Shelby, up on there. <laughs> you Look, if you're a DJ, if you're a photographer, that's good enough. I've seen like real estate agents on it. You know, you don't need to necessarily have anything. I think once you hit a certain age, wait, Shelby, are you on Raya? Shelby, are you I on was, Raya? I was for like 10 minutes and I saw Whoa! like people were like, what a happened? School, like a school teacher. And I was like, I thought they were like famous people. And yeah. like, what is that? This? was not what? Raya. I'm sorry what? to tell you, Shelby. <laughs> you were, you were just, on the PTA you were website. Like, for. <laughs> <laughs> you were reading reviews from the local Subway sandwich shop. That actually wasn't Raya, but nice try. <laughs> <laughs> name Shelby. Remember when I called you, you Sandy for like eight minutes? I'm sorry. Go on. Well, I I would say well, it is interesting because Raya, you you do hear about people being on it, and you're like, oh, yeah. uh, like there is like it, it it does. There's a form of hot privilege that exists out there that you're like, oh. You're on there because you're hot and happen to have 4,000 Instagram followers for no other reason but hotness. But then you also call yourself a content creator. So now you're on here with it's, Ben it's a, Affleck, a, which is crazy. Yes. It's a bunch of bullshit, though. I will say that it is fun to be on it because they bring um, like guys from all over the world. So it'll be in Madrid. Like I'll see um, soccer players from Germany and stuff. And sometimes you mm. match with like an overseas athlete. That to me, it's like free traveling. Like I enjoy that. Um, and you know, I travel to You're England right. a lot. So I have a lot of like London matches, which is fun. That's you know, fun. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is fun. I enjoy it. I'm not shitting on it, but it is in itself a joke. I mean, it's, it's not. I mean, as is like anything. It's a fun clusterfuck. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, like but the, I, I, yeah. I'm not trying to pimp this dating app, but I, no. I've been approached by uh, to like kind of like, you know, to help put it out there. And I, right. I, this isn't even me. I'm kind of talk shit on it, but there's a there's a Jewish Raya that has come oh. out lately, and it's not. And I think it's called Locks Club or something like it is. that. It have is. you heard of? Have you, you heard ever of signed this? into it? A no, friend of mine I, did it. I will not reveal her identity because literally we'll lose this friendship. But a friend of okay. mine did do it. She was like, sign into it. I was like, fine. So I, I didn't even make a profile. I signed in. And I, by the end of it, I was like in a white hood. I was like, I can't do it. I mean, that's a joke. I'm a Jewish person. But it just was by the end. <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, this it is my. You? you were like, you're rushing, no, the, ca- you're rushing the capital on the six. You're <laughs> like, Locks Club Jim did this to Jim. me. <laughs> I was in Nancy Pelosi's office just like <laughs> raving about it, how horrible it was. Um, it just is not for me. It's just, I, you know, I don't know. It Certain apps, if they don't look slick enough, feel janky in a way where. Ooh, uh, okay, I didn't think of it that way. I... Feel, it just feels like ooh, not great. And probably the big problem with it, look, there already was J-Date and like J-Swipe, mm-hmm. whatever the hell it was. Um I respect people who go on it who want to meet a Jewish partner. Sure. Like, I think that's great. I'm not ruling it out for myself. I just, it is not the top thing for me. You know what I mean? So it's not like I, the I, driving force. Let yeah. me, so this is Luxury Lounge. If you're listening right now, yes. 
This is why we invited Michelle Collins on the show. We are legitimately doing what we will be doing for the rest of the episode, and it's complaining about luxury issues. The luxury <laughs> issue here is a dating app exists to bring Jews together who want to meet Jews, and we're like, here's seven issues with it. And I, and like, we <laughs> also oh, about Jewish podcasts because basically, luxury complaints is the first rule of the Torah. Like, totally. you open, you unfurl the shit. And I'm just like, yeah. sail it, Bergdorf's the, BRB. Yeah. That's like me responding. You know, you can't do. The, this is Jews sitting at the. Yeah. This is sitting at the brunch table with my parents in Boca. This is what this show is supposed to be. And I but Boca, I will say about. I mean, we're going <laughs> to get to it. But lo, my okay. luxury lounge with Locks Club, the, it was yeah. presented to me as raya for jews so it was like and and i'm not someone to sit on moral mountain i'm not a big like the ethical issue but there is an ethical issue at least with raya there is the guys as we just went over of you must have a following to be on this app ben affleck will be here and so will hot chick with four thousand followers who calls herself a content creator but at the very least there is the lie that they can live under of we all have people who follow us. Right. The problem with Locks Club is what makes someone a contender for Locks Club, like or uh, what makes someone able to go on J Swipe but not accepted into Locks Club? And the well, only thing look. I can think of is money and looks. Money. Like, well, what is else it is just there in dating? Listen, but that's what, not I know. I, I guess it's more honest. Yeah. It's not what I necessarily, this is problematic. My mother's listening. She's like secretly cutting. It's not necessarily <laughs> what I care about. And by the way, how do you start a Jewish Raya and not call it Marble Raya? Is, I mean, is the guy an actual idiot? Like <laughs> that is born. <laughs> Michelle <laughs> Collins at Mish Mishkal, the quickest <laughs> comic in the Please. game. Come Marble on, Raya <laughs> is amazing. I, I mean, I my. You were the who You're everyone needs to just guess. So everyone knows. I mean, everyone needs to go follow Michelle Collins just for Marble Raya. I mean, and if you didn't get that joke, you're you're out of here. I don't know if you're even you're enjoying out of the this. Locks Club. I, I well, the yeah. Locks Club, but the idea that mm. I mean, I'm like, how do you so you, uh, looks and money? But I guess every app is somewhat looks and money at some point. But it is yes. it is interesting to me that like. Who are these people on this like jury panel that are judging Jews on whether they can get into this higher end version or not? And I'm like, there's a lot of issues in that. Like, I don't think that's actually think anything. It's like Soho House, you know, sure. also has like, uh, who's the jury at the Soho House who decides who can or can't spend $4,000 to then go spend $500 on a brunch? I mean, that is what that fair. basically is, you know? Absolutely. Um, uh, I don't know. I have no issue with it on a moral ground. Just I got having you. used the app for like four minutes, every guy on it, I was just like, oh, this is every guy that I hated in high school. It's just not, <laughs> they're not the guys that I date for me. Sure. But I wish you a lot of luck. If anything, it's good for me because it weeds them out. You know, a lot, lot, lot of bottle service boys on that app, I would imagine. That's so right. listen, we're here at the Luxury Lounge. Shelby's here. Uh, Michelle Collins at Mish Call. We're going to get to your Luxury Lounge complaints. I, I, I think the only appropriate way to start the Luxury Lounge and do our uh, our premiere episode is for me, Jared Freed, to, you know, to kind of um, waltz out to the edge of the cliff and be a little brave and announce my luxury complaint this week. Right, Michelle? I agree. So yesterday, I'm in the city, and my, my luxury complaint is about Amber Alerts. And <laughs> let's just, let's just say it plain. Is she uh, Amber, Amber Alert, Alert, yeah, she's the new Bachelorette, and she's <laughs> she's Amber Alerts. I, I, she was great at the strip club. Um, so I, 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 the listen, I understand if you have an iPhone, there is a moment where you get and listen. I want these children to be found. I do agree. It's better than the milk carton. I can't even believe that was even an option at a certain point. But it is a jarring moment when you get that Amber Alert on your phone. It is a huge bell whistle and you're like, and, and minute one, you realize how little you do 
in the face of danger. I Because I got the iPhone watch. So now I get it on my phone. I get it on my watch. My whole body is jostling. And I do, And at minute one, you go, what am I doing? What am I going to do? Put on my detective hat and get out my, 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 you know, a Carmen San Diego, this thing. What am I, what am I supposed to do? Do you understand what I'm talking about, Michelle? You can, t- well, I'll tell you something funny. You can turn the alerts off in your iPhone. <laughs> and I did that. And I talked about it on my radio show. And I got all these tweets from people being like, you monster. Well, <laughs> you turn, I got shit. For turning them off, I'm like, look, if if a child is missing in New York, where would that child be? Like on the one train? Like I'm not looking for a Nissan, you know, Sentra plate. Like we don't have car situations like well, that here. We're not on the highway like that, you know. Well, in addition to that, and minute one when you get the like, I looked up, I looked at the Amber Alert, and I went, okay, not in my apartment. Am I done? Have I done my, you know? And then, like, do, do I have to? I th- listen. I got the same alert three times yesterday by the third time wow. when like you turning it off and me on the third time that you have to deal with how not a good a person you are which is really the most horrible oh, yeah. part about the whole thing because at least with the milk box you look at it you go it's uh, I'm, I'm pouring my milk I, I i'm not it's probably already done it happened three weeks ago when it's the iphone it does feel like you are legitimately turning off the idea of like doing it. Like you have to deal mm-hmm. with like, oh, I guess I'm not a great person. And like the fifth time you go, can this kid shut the fuck up already? Like, you, you know, like you just want it out. Well, like you feel that what you turn it off, you feel that once. And honestly, mm. I felt like I'm actually helping. Cause here's the other thing about New York pre pandemic, which is when I did turn it off. Sure. If you're out at a restaurant or in a movie or whatever, and that phone thing goes off, first of all, everyone's goes off at the same time. Second of all, if yours is the only one, everybody looks at you like you fucking asshole. And then you're the dick. Yeah. So there's another level of just like disturbance that happens with that automatic alert where they should consider maybe not having the noise go off or maybe just having a silent text go through. I think it would be more efficient than having a big blaring thing go off because most people I know have turned the shit off. You should I sign to- in. Shelby, what was that? Mine went off in a packed theater and everyone's went off and we all thought it was like War of the Worlds because you're never amount around that many people <laughs> at once. And now there's like some sound you never hear. We're all, okay, it's done. All right, we'll go back to watch. And then the kid was like, I'm here. I'm sorry. It was like, a, <laughs> yeah. I think it was Cars 2. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm here. I'm I've just been enjoying the yeah. film. Yeah. No, well, when it's in a packed movie theater, now you all have to look at each other like, oh, we're all not great people. We're not like mm-hmm. the minute everyone doesn't run out. They're like, no, I want to finish um, Minority Report, so I can't go anywhere now. Like uh, that is <laughs> just every- yeah, great <laughs> reference. Michelle, God, I love Minority you, Report so much. Go on. Do you have a luxury complaint for us to go over before we get to the emails? And any and anyone can send in your luxury lounge. J Train Podcast at gmail J Train Podcast at gmail Send in title at luxury lounge. I got six in front of me. We're gonna get into them. It's funny, you uh, told me this morning we were doing this, and I actually have so many complaints. Every day, mm. I have a new complaint. So, you okay? Should yeah, you I got sorry. I, what do you need? I, frog okay. in my throat, but I, 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 listen, you've already complained with the, with, with Locks Club, okay. with, you know, I don't love Jews. the tone you're taking. I don't love the tone you're taking with me. This is a, a podcast <laughs> about complaints. You literally just, you already it. complained. You just asked me. So, here's my complaint my is complaint. too many complaints from Michelle Collins. <laughs> Oh, welcome to every show that I do is just me complaining. The one that I had recently is I ordered something on Postmates, which you have to be making um, over half a million dollars a year to order Postmates. It's so fucking expensive. It is unbelievable it's, before you get into this, how oh. much you and and you get to the end of your order on Postmates and you're like, I'm already here. I've already eaten the meal in my mind. I'm not yeah. walking this back. <laughs> Wait, I actually have two good ones, two good food Please. app ones. All my complaints about food apps, so I'll make it very quick. One is I, that's a lie. I um, <laughs> placed this order on Postmates last week um, for some fucking like coffee place, you know, on the Upper West Side. That place was considering the order for like an hour and a half and the time just kept pushing. The thing with Postmates is not unlike Seamless where you actually get a person, I don't care what country they live in, I just like to talk to someone sitting of in course. there wherever. 
Here, you cannot, you can only do chat. You cannot get anyone on the phone. And literally for three hours, like a $50 order for three hours. And the thing that was making me fucking crazy, because actually, while this is a luxury complaint, I also care about, say with me, the little person, is that they kept sending different delivery people to wait for this order, like waiting for Godot. That oh. was just never coming. So I kept <laughs> calling these people going, listen, this little, went on for almost two hours. Yeah. I said, you, I said, just go. Like I literally called them. They're like, no, 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 it's fine. And I actually asked to Venmo them tip because I felt so guilty. It was raining outside. I was like, please let me send you like eight bucks just for the inconvenience. Cause I actually felt delivery people to me are like the, some of the best frontline workers New York city has to for offer sure. helping sure. the lazy, helping people. They work their asses off. They literally risk their lives, not just robbing, they're out biking, in the cold, all this shit. Snow, sleet, storm. They're, they're the Heroes. USPS. Yeah. No, no, no. Heroes. And so I feel, I always tip nice and actually quick other mini complaint. And I realized this, is this luxury? I think it is. Cause it's like food ordering. Hey, loving it. I got addicted to thanks to Sarah, Jessica Parker, long story to Joe and the juice, spicy tuna sandwiches. Have you guys tried it? So I know that the Joe and the juice people, there are people that love oh. this place. And anytime I see their food, I am like, I'm not in. I and I'm like I don't know what it is. It's wow. like because they prepare it before, but I do know that this sandwich is like a fan favorite and it's a very much a I think it, oh. it, it you know not to gender this, but it is a female fan favorite. Women seem to love this sandwich. I do find that offensive because actually I know a lot of men who eat the okay. John the Juice spicy tuna sandwich, including Sandy and Shelby. But what I will say is that um, <laughs> I'm going to keep referencing that the whole podcast, by the way. Good old Sandy um, Shelves. Sa Sandy Shelves. <laughs> it's like a SpongeBob character. Wait, by the by, uh, at Aventura Mall, famous mall that I go to where there was also a, say with me, mass shooting this weekend. Uh, there's a Joe so and the Juice sad. there. It's yeah. so horrible. And um, I got into a fight there because they made my sandwich using their black cleaning gloves. I saw them literally wiping a table with Clorox using the gloves and then slap together my sandwich. And I was like, I, I can't eat that. And they got all See, these teenagers were pissed. Go on. <laughs> this is my problem with Joe and the Juice, though. Don't they usually have those sandwich pre-made? I always no, thought they, they make like, it per order. They make it. Nope. OK, they make two MTO. Yeah. It is. That's hilarious. It is. It is a delicious um, it is a delicious sandwich. I think you're, I actually want to send one to you gratis, but let me tell you, I won't be sending it. I will not okay. be sending it via the app because their fucking app, which I actually wrote a letter on their website mm. about you place the order and they do do delivery on it for whatever reason I could leave. Cause they do usually a $10 tip for delivery. I'm very generous. I, I think less than 10. Yeah. I think what I do it for 10, it's like when I get a pedicure, would I touch my own feet for 15 bucks? Absolutely not. So I tip 15 bucks. I'm like, I want to touch sure. my fucking feet for $15, you know? So long story short, with this tipping, they you press, let's say 20%, whatever it is, you press send. As it is considering the order, it automatically defaults to the 10% tip. Oh. So it defaults, all, and I realized this, to like $3 to take it about a mile and a half. Yeah, and people are going, who would, and they're going, they, and people but, are making their own decisions. <laughs> they're going, I'm not leaving the house for three bucks. No. I literally, the fact that I have not gotten suck my dick written across one of these sandwiches and I get, I get embarrassed. I saw it. I go, what the hell? Like I wanted to leave. So I have to scrape together, you know, my singles. This is such a boring story, but I have to, you know, pick through my old jeans to find cash to give to these people. Cause I feel guilty. But this is what the luxury coming, lounge is all you know? about. You, sh you shouldn't have to do this. And my major issue with the Thank apps you. is what you're saying. Yes. And you're totally mm -hmm. right. Is that there's a disconnect. You, some apps, you get to watch the little bicycle travel across the screen. They should all work like Uber. You should feel connected yes. to your order at every turn. I was traveling this past weekend. I had the same thing happen with me. I was done late with shows. I ordered Chinese food because I'm a drunk, fat mess. And I was like, I need, uh, I need chicken fried rice. And I was like, and it's the worst thing for me. And I'm trying to lose weight and I'm pissed about it. And I get to the end of the order, just like you're saying. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm spending $60 on Chinese food for myself. Order goes in. I'm like, I've, I've, I've had it with it. I did it on the way home so that it would get to me within 20 minutes of me getting back that. to the hotel. Yeah, I want it like, I want to never break stride. That's how my goal <laughs> is to is to have the Postmates person hand me a bag as I'm walking into my hotel room to get naked and eat it in my shorts with no t-shirt. Oh, so now that paradise. is the dream. Yeah, and I'm on. trying mm -hmm. to get to that moment. So I get back to the hotel and 
I the app isn't showing me where it is, and it's saying that the restaurant is closed. So I'm going, what's going on? So you ever order it before the restaurant closes, then the restaurant closes, now you're disconnected with the restaurant, you can't even call them to complain. So now I'm just sitting outside wishing upon a star, and I'm like, hello, uh, you know, uh, Ch- you know, Chinese food restaurant, please, I hope you're coming. And I'm like talking to the door guy at the hotel, and he's like, yeah, man, I don't know if it's coming. Like I'm discussing with him how much a fat loser I am. And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I've given up on yeah. the Chinese. So I gave up on the Chinese food. I walk into the hotel, tail between no. my legs. I say, no, I'm still hungry. I'm ordering Domino's. Domino's oh, has the no. best app in the game. There is no app that they literally hold you like a baby in their arms and rock you mm. until the food gets to your door. So I'm like, I'm ordering Domino's. I can count on it. It'll be fine. I'll get the thin uh. crust pizza because I'm being healthy with pepperoni on it. So listen. I get it from Domino's. I order it. I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank God. you, Domino's, God. I go downstairs to pick up the Domino's. The door guy looks at me. He goes, it's your lucky day. Your Chinese food is here. I go, oh, uh, I'm God. Gonna, I'm going to absolutely blow my brains out. Oh, I God. can't take it. I, I go, I, I I, he hands me a bag that is legitimately the size of my torso. 75. I, I, <laughs> 75 I go, I'm so oh embarrassed. I'm like, oh, my God. I also have Domino's coming. I, I then bring the Chinese food up to the hotel room. I'm like, what am I going to yeah. do? The same door guy is going to see me bringing up. And so then I go. <laughs> So then Domino's is calling. I go downstairs. That is the worst the feeling. Door guy, oh my God, I'm stressed The door stressed guy looks out. at me. He's oh, like, oh no. He did one of those moves where he's like, you, Domino's? Chat? Like you could see him doing the math in his head. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I got a full <laughs> full house upstairs. And then I just ran up with both foods and ate them Which all. Which one did you eat? Uh, you didn't eat all of it, no. Listen, I have a binging uh, problem. So, um, <laughs> so this like is- It's like Dutapas. It was a little top. You know what? This is why Shelby yeah. Sandy is the best uh, producer in the game. He knows Fantastic. how mm-hmm. to make any pro. This is right. I a little, little tapas. I I had a little bit of everything. Little you know. I put some fried rice on the pepperoni thin crust pizza. Gonna be a suggestion to the Domino's Corporation uh, that that could I be a good the guy fun thing. Who makes it. I love that cartoon man who makes her pizza on the pizza tracker. I haven't gotten Domino's in a long time because for me. It, it is where I know it's like when an addict texts the dealer. Like I just know when I'm on that Domino's page that I am, I am like, uh, when I say rock, hey, baby, you still around seven hours. <laughs> My arm is like jammed in the pizza oven. and I can't get it out. Like I, it Domino's to me is it reflects my unhappiest times in LA where, mm. and I wonder, I'm going to reference something in LA that if anybody knows who this is, they're going to feel very connected to me. There was a delivery guy at the West Hollywood Domino's such a nice guy who had such a high pitched voice. Like I felt so bad for him because he was so sweet, but he clearly medically had something going on and he had like a Minnie Mouse voice, a guy. And wow. he was so nice. Like high pitch Eric. Him. Yes. I won't do the voice because it's not nice, but he would like, sure. be like your pizza's here, like through my door. And I'd be like, it's you. And I throw the door open, get my shit. Those fucking, yeah. I'll tell you what I cannot bring into my home and I won't do it. Jared, those cinnamon twists. I cannot, Bring the cin- I can't yeah. bring any Domino's dessert into the house because I don't know what they put in that shit. If it's and, methamphetamine, and in the what that horse did, the <laughs> anti-inflammatories, whatever that yeah, Kentucky that's, Derby horse. That's what got him. <laughs> it's what got they him. They gave, and when they first came out with desserts at Domino's, oh, it was God. like this. It was like the drug dealer being like, "Just try it." You know, they gave it with yes. you. They were like, and you get free cinnamon sticks. And then the rest of your life, you're like, I know how good they taste. I know they're somehow greasy. And they all just, the, the problem with Domino's, they make it all in the same oven. So it's just all different versions of a pizza. It's all the That's same right. bread. It's all the same. And then just different things spread on it. But let's get to some luxury items. And they have that, items. that butter needle. I just have to bring up that butter needle. They have that oh, butter at, needle. Wow, Shelby's showing the app right now. And like, the app is making delicious. me hungry through the Zoom. This is crazy. Shelby, it's do you have honestly any sh- delicious? Go on. Shelby, we're gonna do we want to get your luxury lounge complaint, but we want to read some of the listeners at J or J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Title it Luxury Lounge. Send it in every Thursday. We're gonna be doing going to the lounge. This is uh Michelle Collins is killing it right now at Mish Call. 
Love, love it, love it, love it. Ever go follow Midnight Snack? That's your podcast, the Michelle Collins Show, every Monday through th- through Friday on Sirius XM, seven to ten a.m. It's a fantastic show. Shelby, do you have a luxury complaint before we get to the listener? I do. Just in editing the podcast, now we mm. have to put out a video clip. You know, yes. So you're you're in the ed- the audio app, you're in the 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 video program, yeah. mm-hmm. but in the Adobe Audition to make a cut, you press the R key. And then you go over to Premiere and you'd think, you know, Razor, it's the Razor tool. In Audition, the R key, Razor. In Premiere, it's the C key. Oh, so the keys change. This is a very, there is someone who also edits stuff that is like, finally, someone said it. And the rest of our listeners are going, Okay, we we have no now, <laughs> literally. I could, yeah. You said key change. I thought of Beyonce's "Love on Top." That's where I'm at mentally. I was like, "Ooh, key change." But I stopped, da, da, Shelby, da, da, listen, da, da, your complaint, on. your and complaint you could, is worth it. Go ahead. You could you could go in and make like custom key things, but why not just make it the same across yeah. your whole platform? It's a good point. Totally agree. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Truff. I am such a huge fan of Truff. I love what they're doing as a company. Not just their hot sauce, which I love, but I saw it and I was like, okay, it's Truffle Hot Sauce. Cool company, fun, delicious, yeah. But what else could they do? And now they have a line of products that is for everyone listening right now. I don't care who you are. You're going to have something that you're going to love from them. They've got truffle mayonnaise, truffle hot sauce. They got, uh, I think there's like, uh, there's truffle pasta sauce. And in different kinds, you can get like the vodka sauce. It's truly unbelievable how they've grown black truffle arabiata, black truffle pomodoro. Um, Oh, okay. So they don't have the, the... They got an Arabiata and a Pomodoro. I mean, people, it takes a dish, a normal Monday night, a normal Tuesday night, and it turns it into a fancy, luxurious affair. And we know we love luxury here on this podcast. And I got to say, it's just the, the, the pasta sauce, they're out of it all the time. Like, you have to get it. It's that good. Here's the other thing they're doing. They're doing truffle infused olive oil. And I'm using it, what I do, what it's made, here's how it's helped my life. Yeah, 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 you heard me. Truff has improved my life. And, and I want it to improve yours as well. I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating because I'm trying to be healthy. You guys all know. I'm obsessed with, you know, trying to lose weight, trying to, you know, I'm always trying to lose that 10 pounds. And, and part of it is eating right and when I eat right you know there's those like TikTok thing where someone that's a trainer he's like if you want to you know get in good shape you gotta eat like a dog you gotta eat very much the same every day and what truff has done for me is added excitement to my healthy meals when I'm eating eggs I can put the truff hot sauce I can use the truff olive oil to coat the pan and now I've added a little bit of a different spin on trying to eat healthy. You can do it with your chicken, your uh, eggs, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, your pastas, you're doing a whole wheat pasta, throw some truff pasta sauce on there. There you go. Now you've been taken away to the Italian countryside uh, and you can hear the truffle pigs in the background. So listen, you get to be the truffle pig. You get to eat it all. So listen, I, I've, I, I've gone on and on. And just for my listeners, they're giving you an even better offer. They, they actually like the people that work at Truff. They've, like, they're fans of the show, too. So they're going to help out fellow listeners. Get 15, 15% off site-wide, plus free shipping with promo code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN at Truff.com. That's 15% off plus free shipping on everything. So everything I just mentioned 15% off plus free shipping. Just shop at truff.com. That's T R U F F F is in fantastic. Dot com. Truff.com. Use promo code JTRAIN for 15% off. Listen, everyone should send in their luxury lounge. Uh, JTRAIN podcast at gmail.com. Let's read it. Ready? You ready to go? I'm ready. 
My job is incredibly flexible. I work remotely and not just a COVID thing. The company was remote prior to COVID and will continue to be indefinitely. I'm able to live anywhere in the country and I'm paid well enough to not really have to sweat cost of living. I have no long-term partner. My family is very spread out already and this support and thus supportive of me moving wherever I want. I have limitless choices and I'm paralyzed by the anxiety of where to go. <laughs> I can't help but doubt my choice, no matter which one it is, because when you can be anywhere, it makes you really think critically about why you're going to be in that particular city as opposed to any of the other options. I've lived in four cities in two years, moving to the fifth in the fall. I totally agree. The options being limitless mean that you keep moving options. This is a very relatable thing. Think of you know these dating apps. This is... People are like, I'm one swipe away from maybe better. We're chasing ghosts. Michelle, where would you live if you could live anywhere in the country? Or how would you handle this having limitless options? Well, it's funny because I feel like everyone sort of went through this this past year, except for the travel aspect, I guess. But working from home, I actually thought this like, okay, maybe if I could do my show from anywhere, you know, I mean, you know, yes. that if I could go anywhere in the world, I would move to London tomorrow. London. Like it's my yes. favorite city in the world. Um, the land of many you, D's for Michelle Collins. It's uncut D's. That's my Adam Sandler movie about it. <laughs> God, I'm good. Uh, anyway, at Mish Call, go follow <laughs> immediately for <laughs> uncut so D's. God, I love you that so much. That was amazing. Okay. Thank you. That is funny. And I'm going to figure out a way to tweet that. But, um, yes. I, but I got to tell you, Jared, when I was in uh, Miami, Mm. which was for two months. It was the first time I'd ever gone there and not stayed with my parents. And the freedom of that, I actually had a great time. Miami is a, can be very dumpy. Like the people can be hard yeah. sometimes. I had such a great time. I was like, I could actually see myself living in South Florida, which is also where I was born and raised. I totally agree with this complaint. I totally agree with you. South Florida has, you know, that's the thing you learn when you kind of like, because of this year, many people got to like go to their hometown or go to maybe somewhere new and, and kind of explore living long term somewhere. So I think all of us are kind of going through that like, wow, I could do this somewhere else. Wow, I could do this. And I think for this person, what I would say to them, they say they don't have to sweat the cost of living. I think that is like number one. Where can you afford? Where can you live large? Where can you live fun? Where can you get your most disposable incomes worth, you know, out of your disposable income? You know, so, and my initial suggestion was going to be they uh, to do like do some testers. Like, you know, let's do a few different mm -hmm. cities and see which we like. But they've already said they've lived in four cities in two years, moving to a fifth in the fall. So they've kind of already- Too many tested the market like at this point what i would say to them is you need a crew i think the the i you need people to hang with and and your city is only as good as the people you can lean on the family yeah. like i think part of what you loved about south florida and what i love about it is that i could like hang with my mom and dad and not feel the need that i was like missing out on meeting new people but you could like kind of like go in and out of it you didn't have to like you know, stay with mom and dad. You could like do an hour, you know, instead so of like a whole day. Mom and dad drive by was plenty for me. And then, yeah, and I rekindled with people from high school who I haven't talked to in a hundred years. You know, I was, I had a good time. I went out with people. It, it, they have beautiful restaurants down there. The beaches are beautiful. Obviously summertime, you know, my joke is you walk out of the house and you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall because there's no air. Like you can't <laughs> physically breathe when yeah. you leave your house. But um, it's it's a bad place. I agree with you, friends. That's what it's going to be about. I don't know if this person is single or not, but also where you find There's, dating success or where your partner is They're happy. single. Single. Where I, you like to date, too, honestly, would help, I think. But the, the, the also the thing I'm going to complain with them about and the worst part about this is you do mm -hmm. kind of go, I could do this. You, you know, like every place you go, you go, I could do it. But is it the one? Is it the one I, I need agree. to do? No? Well, I, how do you feel? I don't agree because, well, when I was in LA, which was the, again, five, you know, dominoes infused years of my <laughs> life, as we discussed. Um, so you can imagine what I looked like. Uh, I did not feel that at all. Like I knew from the first year that that was not where I was going to end up, but I just kind of had to stay there because I had nowhere to go. You know what I mean? Sure, like you sure. do know when you get, I can tell you like, 
I couldn't live in San Francisco. I just know I would hate it there. Um, what, what's the reason for what that? What are you going to say? Um, like, you know, I just don't connect with it there. The downtown area, it feels like um, stepping into an old Guys and Dolls short story where everyone is like a weird, <laughs> greasy gangster. Like, it just, there's an energy in San Fran where I really thought, yeah, I could see myself getting murdered here, like, easily. Like, I could just absolutely sure. see my murder happen. Uh, there are a couple cities and then there are other cities that I just adore and could honestly, I could almost see myself living in Vegas. I feel like talking about this. People are like, oh, Michelle's a garbage back. Now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> She's shitty. Portland, Oregon. I love just I love Portland, West. Oregon. But then but then Portland's there's this city. like yeah. there's also the city suburb thing. Like yeah. I, you know, you go live in a suburb for like a week. You go, oh, things are pretty simplified here. You know, mm-hmm. like thing. But then you go. Am I done with excitement? Do, am I going to be going, oh, I won't come into the city tonight? You know, like that's another part of it where you go, you know, because I, I see people where they're like, yeah, I'm mowing the lawn. And I'm like, wow, what a what a Zen moment for you that I have no relation to whatsoever. None. I mean, you know, the <laughs> funny thing is, is that I'm like, oh, maybe I'll move because I'm on the Upper West Side. I'm like, maybe I'll move. And then I look at New Jersey and I'm like, oh, that'd be fun. I could go to Costco every day. Yeah. And I could just see myself driving off the George Washington Bridge to my death after like <laughs> three months, you know, just being like, <laughs> it just got to be too much. So basically, I don't know where this person will be happy, Jake, but I wish them all the best. We could all do this, by the way. Like, What's that? I know, I know somebody who they had, uh, they had, uh, their job was in the, the Times Square building, like the, their, mm-hmm. their company. That famous floor. one. It cost. And like recently they said, we're not going to have an office there anymore. Like we're okay. we're all going to work from, and they're like a global, it cost $7 million in rent a month. Really? To, to have the office there. So like, imagine so, if you're like, oh, I want, can I have a raise? Like, <laughs> and now we're going to like, suddenly we don't, we're not going to spend like, you know, I don't know, seven times 12, like over $80 million a year. But, sure. Yeah. Like, but I, you couldn't give me like a little bit of. It does but translate. Every New York place. Yeah. Well, it does translate. It's like if you're going to go remote, they're like, well, we have to pay. There's this weird thing. It's like they don't have to pay for an office anymore, but they're also saying we don't have to pay you as much because you're going remote and you don't have to come. To the office. And you're like, wait a minute, this math doesn't work out at all. If I'm this yeah. person, I'm going to be near a beach. That's where I go. Mm-hmm. I It's got to be a beach or bust because, you know, and that's what's going to make you have, you know, a beach solves all issues. You're having a bad day. Go to the beach. You're 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 feeling hot. Go to the beach. Take a dip. You you know, it's just one of those things. And that's why, you know, Florida kind of speaks to me. But I, I let's do another luxury lounge. J train podcast at gmail.com. Okay. J train podcast at gmail.com. Uh, send it titled luxury lounge this one says investing there are so many companies to invest in and jargon that at this point in my life i'm too embarrassed for people to know that i don't know you have to be a finance person to understand what's going on or someone who has put aside a ton of time to gain a loose grasp on why quote unquote the market is up or down i honestly have no idea what's going on in the stock market but i have 50k invested based on on what one person told me one time. Also, I cannot tell you how many how my dishwasher works. Honestly, once I turn it on, I have no idea how dishes come out clean. Sincerely, a rich idiot. So let's start with investing. I totally agree with this complaint. Investing is one of those things where you, whenever someone talks about it, they talk about it confidently. You rarely Mm. hear people that are like, hey, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with my money because that is an embarrassing way to enter a room. It is more, and this happened with the dot-com boom and it's happening now with crypto where your friend who listened to one person and got a bit lucky is going, you know, crypto, you know, Doja coin, you know, whatever the fucking thing's called. And then they get to sound like a smart person for a while. But, you know, here's the problem with that person. And they're the same person at the casino who tells you about the wins and never tells you about the losses. For every win, there's 20 losses. And let me just tell you, as someone who sold life insurance and annuities and and retail uh, investment products, that's what that is. 
Um, nobody knows what they're doing, even people who work in the financial world. I remember meeting with people who worked at like Goldman Sachs and you'd be like, well, how are you saving money? And they're like, I don't know. I just kind of put it in the bank. And you go, don't you work at Goldman? Aren't you at the most famous one? And they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So just know nobody knows what the hell they're doing. And if they're telling you about a little kind of like side hustle investment product, they got lucky and they'll probably be unlucky the longer they stay in it because the longer you stay at the casino, the more likely mm-hmm. you're, you are to like lose money. Michelle, don't you have, do you, do you agree? 100% agree. Also, um, I'm like a noted, noted idiot. Like I think mm. people, when they think of me, they go, well, she's an absolute moron. <laughs> and um, I invest my money in Schmattis from Marshalls that I then sometimes right. sell to Buffalo Exchange for about 40 cents a piece. <laughs> so I get about 0.001% of my money back in certain sure. cases, which is pretty good. Um, I have no idea how the stock market works. And, you know, I think if I did understand it, I'd be good at it because I actually can. I'm like skinny, mm. um, very, you know, not to give our people's a worse reputation, but I can <laughs> scheme sometimes or find out, you know, like when I was on eBay in college, I used to uh, find amazing deals for things and know that there was worth there and then sell it and make a ton, not a ton of money, but spending money in college, put it that way. This was like, you know, 20 years ago, but I think that is the stock market. I just don't understand well, how it literally works. You know, I, I not to be this guy who had one person say one thing and they've just gone with it their whole life. But the yeah. S&P um, has outperformed uh, outperformed uh, bonds over any 10 year period over the course of its history. So it's all about risk tolerance. People don't do just an S&P index fund because what are it you goes talking about. I, I, I know this, this is, this is exactly, literally well, what I, I thought you were the, really going to give me good advice. And I'm already sitting here. Just well, I have no I, idea. An index, an index fund just tracks the market and it costs very little, but Shut it goes the fuck up. up it, OK, I, no. Shut the oh, wow, fuck that sounded up. like me. You're right. You're so you right. Can't play that. It sounds too much like me. <laughs> All I'm People saying think is I said that, that to him and I did it. Yeah. People, if you're in it for the long term, that's what you have to be in mm-hmm. it for because it's going to go up and down, up and down. But you just hope it goes up more than it goes down. That's uh, Shelby. I know is is well, is, is one, hates capitalism. Like a year ago, <laughs> they just put like a trillion dollars in to just like make it look good. So it's all fake sure. anyway. And want to like everybody <laughs> listening just heard that this person say, I had 50,000 just lying around to put in and just stopped listening. They're like, everybody listening. Well, like, this is the I luxury 50, lounge. If I had 50 grand, I, I'd be rich. I wouldn't need the stock market. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, nah. that, that is first of all, not true. If you had 50 grand, you'd be worried about getting 50 more grand. Wouldn't you? No, you can't retire on 50 grand. Be you'd done. be off on an Island. You'd be done. <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> I, I listen, I want to go to that. that. Please, Shelby, send me the um, the the uh, the Fandango account for I'm, the island that can I can live off for fifty grand for the rest of my life. Um, so I or not Fandango, the TripAdvisor for I'm whatever island any, that is. Everybody listening cannot ima- most cannot imagine having just <laughs> that is the premise of the luxury kidding. lounge. Jay, yeah, Train, reinvest pa- my money for me would be amazing. I got you. I'll like literally Jay- okay. <laughs> The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Roman. Listen, it's so easy to ignore problems. It's it's just easy to say, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll figure it out the next day. Uh, I got a little pain in my leg, but you know what? I'll walk it off. With Roman, it's easy to take care of, you know, your, uh, something like ED, which ED, erectile dysfunction, also gets blamed on, oh, I had a couple drinks tonight and... You know, I, 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 it'll be better the next time. And then the next time comes and, you know, it was a couple drinks and maybe, you know, tomorrow I'll, we'll, we'll kind of and in that and then you kind of just push it off. Listen, don't push this stuff off. Get Roman dot com slash J train. That's get Roman dot com slash J train with Roman. You can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED all from the comfort and privacy of your home. That's an important part, because a lot of times when we push these things off, you say, do I have erectile dysfunction? Then you go, I should see a doctor. Then you go, 
I don't even got a doctor. Well, listen, let's go talk to a licensed, a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. We'll work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. I love that. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. So this is really an opportunity. It's an opportunity to see, hey, maybe you don't even need it at all, but Roman's there to kind of like hold your hand through it. Just go to GetRoman.com slash JTrain. Complete an online visit. Erectile dysfunction used to be tough to tackle, but now there's Roman. Complete an online visit today to connect with a healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash JTrain now. You'll get $15 off your first month. It's time to take care of your ED. Get started today and you'll save $15 on your first order. That's GetRoman.com slash JTrain. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Did you know you can use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries? Listen, people, this is a huge opportunity. Right now, you're watching Netflix, and you know, if and in, 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 in like you're watching Netflix, but you're watching on the American Netflix. Now you go to UK Netflix and Brooklyn, you, you can watch Star Trek and Brooklyn Nine-Nine is on Canadian Netflix and Rick and Morty is on French Netflix. So what you're doing is expanding your options. And, and that is an amazing opportunity because you go, oh, it, it, you know, if you have a favorite show and it's only on Hulu, now you're sitting at home being like, do I get a whole a whole you know uh thing you know do i get a whole new subscription just to get this one show well let's try and open up your world with express vpn here's how it works express vpn lets you change your online location so you can control where you want sites to think you're located it's easy to use open the app select a location push a button and you're in for thousands of new shows and tv new shows and movies uh choose from almost 100 different countries wow so UK, Japan, UK. basically, let's take a trip around the world on our TV screen. This works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, Netflix, etc. ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast, stream in HD, no buffering, and it works for every person and device in your home. Plus, it encrypts your data. Go to expressvpn.com slash JTrain. That's expressvpn.com slash JTrain. You can get an extra three months for free. Ooh. That's expressvpn.com slash JTrain, expressvpn.com slash JTrain. You can get an extra three months free for free. So, people, expressvpn.com slash JTrain. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. JTrain podcast at gmail.com. Title at Luxury Lounge. Send in yours. We won't be as judgy as Shelby. Send in your $50,000 complaints. We are ready for them. Uh, let's do one more. Is that okay? We got time for one yeah. more, Shelby? Everyone? I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Okay, here we go. Hi, Jared. My luxury issue is that when people are using the paper liner on the toilet seat, please make sure it goes down when you flush. It's so gross to walk into the toilet stall and see a used toilet liner. What the fuck am I supposed to do with it? It basically makes the stall unusable until someone takes one for the team and somehow makes it go down. I find it odd that someone is so paranoid that at work, that at work in our office they must use a toilet liner for cleanliness. However, they don't feel an obligation to make sure no one has to touch their used toilet liner. Thanks for listening. I totally agree. I have, I have a lot to say. I couldn't I agree more. Say. It is interesting that yeah. someone could be... It, the idea that you worry about germs, but you're selfish enough to not care about germs for others is enraging. The idea also, the toilet liners were made to be flushed down. They ha it, The first time you look at a toilet liner, you're like, what the hell is going on here? Like, what is this paper scarf? And why does it have a little hat that goes down like a bib you gotta punch and, you gotta punch through it like on prices right punch a bunch yeah, gotta get the, a little punch. the yeah. bib is meant to go in the toilet so that when you mm -hmm. flush it is heavy enough to drag the whole toilet liner down with you That's michelle right. what do you have to say about this luxury complaint well first of all i'm very um conscious of my fellow uh toilet users mm -hmm. and i actually try often to leave the toilet cleaner than when i walk in now that means i i am someone who i do squat usually mm. over the bowl. Um, so you don't sit, you're, you're out on sitting. Well, to be honest with you, I used to at times sit, but always do a wipe down liner. Then depending on if I've had a lot to drink, 
or if there's, <laughs> you know, as a tall girl, my center of gravity is higher. In the, but honestly, I, maybe, I don't know what did it, but I just, I really have not sat in a toilet in a long time. I will not leave the seat dirty. I will, when I'm done, I will obviously clean myself. I will take, please, I did not think I was going to be talking about this on a luxury. <laughs> I will, I will dry myself off. I okay. will take a lot of toilet paper and I will go around and clean. If, so, you know, my aim wasn't right or whatever. Michelle, I, I have to ask you. Nice. <laughs> so, so Michelle, rude. you, so rude, but... Michelle, you are actually cleaning the toilet to then hover over it. Well, that's first sometimes, but usually I will. Yeah, I will. I will. I mean, I don't touch it with my hands. I take a big wad of TP, mm -hmm. TP, because I'm mm -hmm. from a different country. I don't know what that means. <laughs> take the thing, clean it. I'm never touching. Like it never gets on me, obviously. But yeah. I don't. I personally don't like the feeling of walking out of a toilet stall, especially if there's a line or whatever people, and then knowing they're going to go in and see something filthy, dirty, and be like, "That girl's disgusting." You know what see, I mean? I just can't I, do it. I'm the same as you, but I am leading in. I, I I am coming in and I'm cleaning it up. Like I'm literally coming in like I'm the yeah. janitor and I'm willing yeah. to take a, a big thing of TP, as you put it, mm -hmm. and I'll do the big wipe around. But I sit on the seat. I, I get down. I, I'm, I'm OK with it. To me, okay. sitting on the seat with your buttocks is the same thing as your arm touching a door. Like I, I really don't see the difference after I've wiped it well, off. Well, the difference is that there's still like urine on it, you know, unless you're mm. using Clorox wipe. There's still urine germs cooking but on that seat. My, I'm not I, that anal, you know. It's, I mean, I don't really like to do that unless, again, like certain circumstances. I took the Amtrak this weekend. I have never toilets. hovered so high. I have never <laughs> hovered so high. I, I literally, the my Am ass was on top of the train. <laughs> The amp, I just, Michelle's just taking a shit from the skylight. She had to open the door that, you know, I, I, as an Amtrak user myself, there is, mm. and if anyone that works for that company, if you're listening right now, you have the most Wait. disgusting toilets I've ever fucking seen in my entire life. In the world. They, in the world. They, I mean, they, disgusting. They Expensive ticket. And the biggest yeah. problem with the Amtrak toilets, and Again, this is a luxury lounge complaint. That, and I, this is what I love about the lounge. We go, we, we hopscotch from complaint to complaint. We have gone from toilet yeah. liners to now Amtrak bathrooms. The Amtrak bathroom, the biggest problem is their doors are unreliable. They yes. have doors that you th that the lock is not very good. So you put there's a little slide thing, but it doesn't slide over enough where you trust the lock. I have actually sat to take a dump on an Amtrak train. No. And the door we you know it's moving around and the uh, door oh, has no. slid open while I am sitting there taking a dump. And at that point I should be able to sue Amtrak for you know like uh you know mental issues at that point like that is oh. horrifying and it's because it's a doubt. you have to t now i'm testing that door i'm doing engineering on the door every time i go in there i'm holding it while i'm peeing and it's like it's not an enjoyable experience and it's like and the problem again to hopscotch onto another complaint is there's no competitor no one's pushing Amtrak. There's no Southwest Airlines to push Amtrak. No. There's no, you know, JetBlue to be like, hey, we have toilets that will lock. And Joe flush. Biden loves that was the it, other though. thing. What's Joe this, Biden Shelby? Loves Joe Biden loves it. So be like, yeah. hey, get lock those things up. Yeah, Joe Biden. Listen, now they have the president supporting their company. Who's going to? They have no reason to change now. There should there could be a whole like just pile of dung just sitting in the toilets right now. We all have to take the take that train. It's it's a ridiculous situation, but going back to the cleaning of the toilets, please. I when I walk into a nice clean toilet, it just feels nice. And I, my worst fear in the world is somebody walking in after me and thinking, "What a scum!" See, she is. I, I'm actually not surprised by this complaint because I do think a lot of germaphobes are a little bit selfish. They don't think of others mm. a lot of times. Like, have you ever watched? I saw a guy the other day um, doing the door with his elbow. This is a big yeah. thing now with COVID where people don't want to touch the doorknob. And he was doing like jujitsu on the door. And I'm like, dude, enough, like enough already, this big show. And then I had like, he did it and then slipped through and then was able to get through. And then like, I'm left to like, like, he's not going to hold the door open for me. Like no, at that no. point, like, I, you know, he's saving himself from some unknown, you know, <laughs> uh, disease that he's not getting. 
Yeah, but can't with this uh, complaint, can't the person just take like a lot of toilet paper and just touch it and knock it into the toilet bowl? Like, I don't see what the problem I, is. I would agree with you that. You loosen I, up a little bit, you know? Th- there is a point. And also, if it's someone at your office, you yeah. like, I kind of have this thing where it's like, it, it, it's one of those weird mind things where it's like, if I'm doing it, it's right. And if everyone else is doing it, it's wrong. Same with the office. If everyone in my office is doing like. I, like I kind of assume everyone in my office is like me because I work here. They must be as clean and amazing as me, Shelby. Mm. The real issue isn't the, the the little paper on the thing. It's mm. that the 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 sensor for the automatic toilets that's mm-hmm. so yes. sensitive that you could walk past the sink just to wash yes. your hands, and the that would go off in a stall where the door is open. That's awful because you'll be sitting on the toilet and sometimes all of a sudden you're just getting blasted up your anus like with a flush. Times. Yeah. And it's like, right okay. Yeah. And, and what that takes away from you is the pleasure of seeing what you've produced. There is no, like when it, I need the flush to happen right after I see how much poop I've put in the toilet. Oh, I, I, I need a- I, well, the automatic flushers are a curse upon our society. Number yes. one, they never work. Pro- if you're my size, maybe for a petite person, it works properly. When you walk in, they're built like Hodor from Game of Thrones. The shit <laughs> flushes nine times in one session. It doesn't know where you are. It's just like, oh, there's flesh in this box. Let's just flush Absolutely. in case. I agree with Jake- you that on the, on the rare occasion, by the way, that I am not only peeing, which happens in only the greatest of emergencies i do like to see what's happening in there so i agree with you it should wait until i know what came out <laughs> j train podcast anyway, if you're interested in dating me you should dm me <laughs> at <laughs> at mish call on instagram at Sorry, mish call yeah. the michelle collins show 7 to 10 a.m on sirius xm midnight snack is the podcast go subscribe let's do one more is that okay mish call Please. of course okay. shelby of course. Here's a luxury lounge. Lo- love the new segment. Well, you're going to love this whole episode. There has been so many great complaints this episode. And listen, I want your feedback. I want to hear from you. Do we like this Thursday episode? Do we not like it? Do we wish there was different segments? I think we can. This, uh, this is uh, this is we write to edit on this podcast. I am looking to tinker because I am looking for ways to keep the audience engaged and gain new listeners. And I want luxury <laughs> lounge people. We're going to have merch. It's going to be great. Love the new segment. Thanks for all you do. Been a fan since the TFM days. I'm a huge fan of the turtles, so I totally understand the push to go strawless. But occasionally, I still like a straw in my iced coffee for the vibe. If you know, you know it's just better. And I cannot stand when coffee shops use sippy cup lids even when I request a straw. The straw just isn't controlled in the same way with a sippy cup like I like they are on, in, on the lids with the straw holes. This cause uh, cause must be addressed right away. I totally agree. Could not oh, agree so, more. Let let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you a little tale. Sure. It involves the Amtrak train that we just talked about. Okay. I went to the new. I call it the Bobby Moynihan Station. It's the new train station up <laughs> by Penn Station on Thirty Fourth okay. and Eighth. It is gorgeous. Thirty Third. Yes. It there is beautiful. Starbucks there. There was. It's really stunning. They have a Starbucks there. I got a nice Americana. That's my go-to grande. They put a lid on it. I have my luggage there, all the shit with me. That had a hole in it, like a, a yeah. four inch, you know, the big hole lid? That yep. lid needs to fucking go. That's and what I she's said, talking about. I'm that's sorry. the sippy cup lid. They, they, and but it was to get two. us away from the straw. There's two sippy cup lids. There's one that has a gaping hole, which mm. I was offended. They gave me the gaping one. Yeah. And then there's one Judgment with the more on lady... Uh, absolutely a more ladylike petite hole which yeah. is still not great and i will still shove a straw through that hole sure. but i much prefer that starbucks needs to do away with the gaping hole because that shit is you spill it it does nothing might as well just not even use a lid i still we, put a straw through the hole i'm sorry i'm a bad person i also love turtles but it is who i am we live in america we have the right to Hello. options freedom of choice yeah. There should be a hole for the straw as well as the option for the sippy cup. Both should be options. I totally agree with the listener. I agree with you with the gaping hole. That straw is swirling around and moving. And now Loading I'm up. Yeah, and I'm doing oh. the move where I'm looking for a straw, which nothing looks less manly than 
and 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 searching around and then this paper straw lasts for about seven minutes it's like you rolled up a paper towel and now you're just it's all a mess we we made a change before having solutions for the change. We didn't think this out. People saw one turtle that we're not even sure if this is even a big issue or not. And all of a sudden, we're all changing our lives. We couldn't we changed quicker for the straw than we did the mask. How is that even possible? Gun control. Okay. <laughs> we is, still have yeah, people can buy automatic rifles. But this I is can't crazy. I mean, what about the turtles to like just snort a little coke? Not thinking about yeah. them, are we? I'm sure <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, uh, Shelby edit that out. Listen, the point is, I feel in a total agreement. Um, I was, and they even knew, and then I got pissed because they wasted a, a lid for me because I said I cannot get on the train with this big open hole lid. So no. they, they shouldn't even have that at the train station. But they took that lid off, and I'm thinking, God, I hope they reuse it because I didn't even touch it. But I know they threw it out. It's just the whole thing is a fucking mess. Uh, that's all. It's a mess. Um, we need to figure out these tops because. In, a, in an age where, like, the, the thing is, ah. there's another element of, like, the toothpaste is out of the tube. We can't, like, I can't look at my kids and be like, in the good old days, we used to mm. be able to drink the whole drink comfortably, as opposed to, like, we can't, ha- listen, we've come to terms with each gen. We're the first generation that's going to do financially worse than our parents. We shouldn't have to do uh, drinkingly Why worse have than our parents. That? <laughs> why did you, by the way, we shouldn't have, why did, I was actually in a good mood until you just said that. And I'm not kidding. I just got so tired. I'm like, I got to go lay down, order some dominoes. Um, we should have a <laughs> podcast called From Tops to Bottom. And it's about right. us talking about those Starbucks tops. Shelby, right. get on it. Get Let's on start it. A movement. Get that seat Michelle Michelle Collins. <laughs> What's the deal with the tops? Yeah, that's, why, that's why Shelby and I have personal problems. <laughs> This is it. I love him. Michelle Collins, thank, thank you, you for, for coming on. This is so fantastic. Oh my God. The first luxury lounge. It couldn't have picked a better guest for this. I'm flattered. I'll be honest. I was hoping to give and maybe even get some relationship advice. However, I am flattered to be here for this. And I adore you. And please come back on Sirius and on the podcast. Like ASAP. Absolutely. And you have my number. We can we can kibitz all day long about dating stuff anytime you'd like. That's so true. So, That's a fact. At uh, adore Mish you, Call. Jared. Thank you. Go follow, go follow at Mish Call, Midnight Snacks, the podcast, Sirius XM, the Michelle Collins Show. Shelby, thank you for coming on. No, thank you. At Classic Shelb on Instagram and Snapchat. I'm Jared Freed. We are here every Thursday with the Luxury Lounge. Get subscribed. Send it to your friends. We're going to be doing a whole new look for the show. But it's the same great time that we always have. Pleasure to have you. I want your feedback. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. And if you have a Luxury Lounge complaint, Send it in. Title it Luxury Lounge. And you're in and you're in the game. We'll be back next week. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.